everybody, welcome to another tutorial with uh, Stacy. Um, I'm with Nerdbound. Obviously, you can get that from the channel. Um, so I'm gonna try to be swift with this one because this is now my third time making this. <laughs> Uh, I got interrupted the first time, the second time I realized uh, I had some pictures in the background that weren't so, uh, they were a little bit NSFW. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. This is a tutorial on how to make an LSPDFR livery uh, or GTA 5 livery. Um, we're going to specifically do it for a police vehicle using paint.net. Uh, this was a request by King Zippy. Uh, so thanks for your request and thanks for your subscribe uh, subscription. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make this for you guys. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know and we'll try to go from there. And see some of the things that I have. Um, I have police vehicles uh, from the BSCO pack and um, I'm going to be using the Charger Sign uh, 1 PNG. We have OpenIV which will help us in creating this livery. Um, and then we have the folder that we're going to use to store all uh, everything that we're going to be utilizing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the template that we're going to use, uh, which I said we're going to use this charger uh, template. We're going to open it with paint.net. Now please don't get too mad at me because I don't use paint.net. Um, so this is kind of me on a le learning curve. We're going to start this off uh, using two different layers. Um, so this layer eventually is going to be gone. Um, this is just to help give you a guide on what it is you're trying to do and where it's going to look like on the car. That being said, we're going to go to our second layer uh, and we're going to go ahead and get the paint bucket out and we're going to dump it. So now you have a completely uh, black background uh, so this is what the car is going to look like. It's going to be completely black. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that for just a moment. Uh, we're going to go to our third layer. And this is where we're going to start adding some designs in. Now I'm going to do something just kind of simple to give you guys an understanding of how, uh, how it works. Uh, basically, anything that has um, an actual grid on it, know how to do that because I use Blender. Um, it's a UV mapping. There we go. Anything that has a UV map uh, already on it basically is what's going to show up. Uh, so we can tell that this is the roof of the car, this is the hood of the car, uh, or sorry, the, the trunk of the car, the hood of the car, uh, the front fender, uh, or fascia depending on you know who you are because I've heard that before. Um, rear bumper, uh, you see different aspects of the trunk right here and then one side of the car the other side of the car and then you've got the rear and front, uh, front plate so you can you know customize these to you um, but we're gonna stick with something simple like this and go ahead we're gonna get our white and we're gonna fill that one in we're gonna get our shape again and go ahead and go and we're just gonna get the door again I'm not trying to make this look perfect I'm just trying to give you guys an understanding little. Um, now I don't know if paint.net does custom shapes uh, like Photoshop does. That's one of the reasons why I use Photoshop. I'm also more familiar with it. Uh, I can always look into that for you guys or if you want to see me in the future create an actual um, police vehicle where I take my time and try to make it look good. I can do that too. This one again is just giving you an understanding so let me know in the comments below if you guys like this and if you want to see me actually do something more with it. Because I've always had a few ideas for a couple different um, skins that I've just never gotten around to making that I think would be amazing for LSPDFR. But we'll get more into that. Okay, so now we've got three uh, white out, uh, whited out areas and we know that this is over the door. Uh, over the other side of the door and then over the roof of the car. Uh, perfectly fine. And then we can add our other layer in if we want to. And now we have a completed um, livery. Now we can start going in here and doing other things. Uh, but, but if we're going to do that, we're going to add another layer. 
but we start on a new layer because you don't want to run into issues or if you run into issues or something you know you delete that layer and come back to it and redo it um, you can also you know I can just completely remove these other layers so I can see exactly what I'm doing and still bring them in at a later point in time um, but anyway so make sure that we have the layer that we want to create something on selected oh it's right here line curve Interesting. Yeah, that would have been nice to know. Anyway, let's see. We've got our text in here, so we're going to go ahead and do a text. We're going to go ahead and change the size of the text. We're going to say 1153. Um, I can't see anything, though. So now we're going to change the color of it down here. Now, I don't know if there's blending mode. Um, all right, size metric tool. Yeah, I don't know that there's any nice way of doing what I'm about to have to do. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish that. Um, your select tool. And I wish there was a way to make it easy. Anyway, so if we hold shift, you see how it kind of sets it at certain points. So it's like every, I don't know, it's more than 15 degrees. But anyway, so basically it, it kind of helps us with uh, setting it in a straight line to where we want it to go. Now I can already tell you, because I've done this twice already, um, that if I put this, right in the middle. We've got that top bar on top of that car that is going to block that number. So I can either put it behind the number or I can put it in front of the number. And honestly, I would personally rather put it behind the number because I think it would look better or more appropriate in, in according to how police departments use this. Um, if I was going to follow and actually create something similar to a, a police station, I would probably look up that department's uh, vehicle type, and then I would try to fo follow an outline without completely copying it so that you don't get in trouble for it. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and finish that, and go ahead and put, nope, okay, add a undo, we're going to do a new layer, add a new layer, now we're in layer 5, I'm going to put this back to where it was. Um, I don't know if there's a way to snap it back to where it was. I don't know how far up it wants me to go. Again, I really feel like there should just be a snap for this. Again, not super experienced with paint.net. Maybe you guys know a little bit more about how to do that. Um, but anyway, so now we've got it back to where we want it to. So we're going to put it here. Uh, we're going to change this down to 190. Not still too big. One. Well, we'll make it 96. So 1153. Now I can already tell you because we have that background layer that we haven't applied yet, that once this is applied, we can basically kiss, we're going to not be able to see it because it's um, going to be black on black. So we're going to change this to white, and we're going to come over here to this one, we're going to do 1153, and we're going to 
and we can put it right there. Now, again, I've done this already, so what I can tell you is going to happen is it's going to get covered up by our uh, front cage bar. So instead of that, we're going to come back over here, I'm going to 1153, and put it towards the back of the car, we'll come back over to this one, 1153, trying to duplicate it, um, we're also going to try to duplicate where we put it in position. Now that's why it's, it, it helps to know that it's wireframe like this. So if I hold control and I scroll in, I can see, you know, I've got the gas tank right here, I can see that this one's about the middle. And then you can always adjust it accordingly. So, this one actually looks like it's right about there. And right about. Alright, now the question is, how is this going to look on the car? Well, we make sure that all of our layers are going to be visible, so now we can see how it's going to look. We're going to do our file save as. Um, I would always suggest uh, that we did make a document tutorial. Um, I would always suggest saving uh, the original file, in this case it's paint.net, obviously if it was Photoshop it would be a PSD, uh, and we're going to save it like that because it's easier to go in and um, re-edit it and just save it as a PNG again, um, which is our next step, so we're going to come in here, save as, and we're going to save it as a PNG, nope, PNG. <coughs> now, Again, I don't know because of what this says right here, if you can go into the PNG and uh, unflatten it so you can get access to the layers. Um, maybe you can, but I would still advise to um, saving both of them. It just kind of gives you a little backup copy. And then, you know, if something happens with this one, you can always go back in here and just re-save it as a PNG. Anyway, so the next step is the vehicle that I want uh, in this pack happens to be the 14 Charger, the one we're dealing with. So we're going to take this, uh, make sure that we go to our mods, updates, uh, 64 uh, DLC packs, uh, latest patch day, <coughs> DLC, uh, X64 levels, GTA 5, and then vehicles. Uh, and then we come in here, make sure it's in edit mode, and then we'll take our files and we'll go ahead and replace it. Now we can blatantly see, when I open this up, what it looks like all the way around. Ooh, that's such a nice little livery. Okay. Now how do we change that? Now if you've seen any of my other videos like how to install a livery or, you know, we can go to our texture dictionary. And then we find our charger sign, and then we're going to replace it. Just so happens that it takes me here, because I've done this already. So we're going to double click it. You can see that it uh, that our new texture is in here. So we're going to save that. It's going to stop responding and then it's going to go back and then we can reopen our fragment option fragment objects and we can clearly see what it looks like so we've got our 1153 just for that number <sighs> up here I guess we should have moved this um, up here instead which that's not too hard of a fix we just need to go back in there and then uh, change it. 
and obviously you can tell it went a little too fast because on this side you can see a little white on this mirror and this one whole mirror is white but um again you get the idea um you can even sit here <coughs> excuse me and do it like i do i'll just put this off to the side oops uh, yes in the background those are uh, the Witcher 3, uh, LSPDFR, and uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So if you don't want spoilers, I guess I should have said don't, you know, don't look at that. Anyway, um, so now we can go back and forth between our model and see if there's something else that we want to change. So, like I said, Open that should just open paint.net automatically. Bring our layers up. Make sure we're on the correct one, which we are. We're going to remove that for just a second. We're going to delete layer four. I'm going to add a. I'm going to delete layer four. We're going to add a new layer. And we are going to add our text again. We want this to be 88. Make sure it's in the same color we want it. It's going to be 1153. Say OK. I'm going to finish it. And then we're going to do our shift trick. And then we're going to change and put it up front. Finish that. Reapply our background layer. And save it. And then we're going to save as. And we're going to do our PNG again. Yes, I do. Close out of this one, OK. Flatten. Come back over to our texture dictionary. And then we're going to just re replace until we get what we are looking for and we're happy with what we see. Now, maybe that's a little more than what you were asking for in this uh, tutorial. But I just want to be kind of thorough so that you guys can see everything that you, you know, what you can do to help you um, better create liveries, skins, whatever you want to call them. Because again, all the tools are right here. And I'm looking at a 55 inch TV. I know most people <laughs> don't have a 55 inch TV um, to just look at. But anyway, it's not the best font in the world, but at least now you can see it. Uh, it looks a lot better. And so now we've made our livery using paint.net. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. If you uh, like this, you know, give me a like, a subscribe. Uh, check out some of my new stuff because I, I just started making uh, other videos for uh, a new game called Lumberjack's Dynasty. It's early release. Um, or if there's other games that you want to see, uh, I do things like Car Mechanic Simulator uh, and all that good stuff. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So thanks, guys. And I will see you in my next video. Alright. Bye.